So I don't know about you, but I spent this Valentine's Day out in Broadmead, and I was protesting for Palestine. We were outside the front of Barclays Bank. It has a huge shop front in the center of Broadmead. And we were protesting the fact that Barclays invests four billion pounds, no small fucking change, four billion pounds into Israeli and arms companies. Atrocious, atrocious amount of money. And so we were there demonstrating. Everyone was giving speeches, chanting along. And I noticed I had this feeling in my stomach, this kind of burgeoning feeling of, I need to say something. And so I did. I got on the mic and I gave my two pennies worth. I said, look, this is fucked. We, this people of Bristol, need to stand up. Our MPs abstained from the vote. They didn't even vote against the ceasefire. And now here we are, putting everything we can into stopping Barclays, a major funder of this war. It's time for everyone in Broadmead to stop banking with Barclays, right? And I thought that was so clear, and yet it felt painful to see most people just walk on by. I was surprised, though, that one chap, kind of bald, stocky guy, who I had this preconception of, oh, this isn't going to go well, you know, we've already had a few people come up to us and start swearing and shouting for one reason or another, and I thought, oh, my (laughs) misconceptions came in, but actually he just came up to me and he asked to shake my hand, and that's all we did, we just shook hands and he said, well done, mate, and it was a powerful, moving moment to feel someone some people that the message was getting through to. Now, that moment was shortly dashed (laughs) afterwards when some kids ran by and egged us. They threw a couple of eggs at the banner, one of which hit me right on the tip of the finger, which is really painful when it's so cold outside. And I felt this kind of slime and goo dripping down me. Not nice. And... They ran on by, you know, these kind of grey dots in the distance, the police, the blue dots ran after them, classic cat and mouse games. Meanwhile, we just stood, you know, we carried on in our non-violent discipline and said, you know, we're not going to chase those people, we're not going to fight back against anyone, we're just going to stand here and give our message. And so after I spoke, um, a wonderful mum, Muslim mum next to me, uh, came up and told the story of the recent six-year-old girl who had been killed after begging for assistance after she was caught in the IDF, the Israeli Armed Forces Crossfire. And guess what? You know, she was another one of these 10,000 children that have died heartbreakingly. And then the woman next to me, she told this story so beautifully that then things started clicking and other people started telling their stories as well. A gymnast who had been in Palestine, more statistics, more stories, really holding the protest together. Sometimes these things can can lose their life if they're just chance. They're really about the people also who are there and who are holding it together. And I think now, more than ever, it's so essential that we bring our voices together. Uh, One fantastic voice that came out to join us was Disraeli, who's a Bristol musician. You've got to check out his stuff. In fact, I'll put on a clip right now so you can see this fantastic poem that Disraeli shouted out in Broadmead against Barclays. Systems in the aeroplane that dropped the bomb, who gave the sums of money that enabled all of that, and sit in offices in Bristol like there's nothing wrong. Barclays, funding death with our savings. Barclays, death to mothers and to babies. It seems a million miles away and just a story, but Babas, there is blood here in Broadmead. Blood upon this Barclays. Funding death with our hard-earned Barclays. Death to brothers and to fathers. It seems impossible to ever change the story. But Babas, there is power here in Broadmead. Power to you all. Power to the people. Empowered by those words, I thought, what can I do right now? This protest feels good, but I'm covered in eggshells and slime. And my voice is hoarse. Where does this go? And so I got on my bike and I cycled to the student union. And I gave them a 
plan, a plan to have an assembly for peace in the Middle East. I think this is one of our only ways forward is to revive our sense of democracy, both as students and throughout the whole of the UK and the world, to not just say, you know, every four years we put an X in a box and hopefully the people we vote for do something for us. It's total bullshit, as we've seen. You know, the MPs we voted for have... 70% of them are against the ceasefire or abstained against it, which is outrageous given the fact that 70% of the public support the ceasefire. And so this, you know, treason of our democracy, this total eroding of our democracy, comes down to this simple fact. They don't actually work for us. We have to revive our own sense of democracy. And so that's why I went to the student union with this plan, right? We need to have a way for all of us to come together, particularly the students have been most affected, the Palestinian, the Israeli, the Jewish students, other Muslim students, and to kind of find a way to heal together, to talk, to process what's been going on, to hear from those who have been best informed, and to come together towards a manifesto a way to unite and bring about change. And for me, this is crucial. It's the fact that we we talk, we heal by processing our feelings and emotions, we listen to each other, and then we create an action plan, a way that we can act together to, to really do something about the grief that we're feeling. And so my idea is that with this manifesto, we use it as like a people's assembly, we create... Um, the demands that we want, and then we present them to the university. They then have some weeks to respond, and if they don't, then we start to escalate our action. We say, look, there's going to be more assemblies, there's going to be um, protests, there's going to be marches, there's going to be occupations, until the university gets its act together and gets those fucking arms companies off campus. It's really not so difficult. They need to care for the students who are most affected in this time. And they need to get arms companies and the big banks that fund them, like Barclays, off the University of Bristol campus, which is where I'm at. I think it's so clear in this moment as thousands more die in Palestine, in Gaza. And so that's what I'm fighting for, this way of coming together in a sense of belonging, in a sense of reviving everything that neoliberalism has trashed so much in our lives which is community and the sense of struggle you know we feel so atomized and lost and i want you all to join me i'm going to put the link down in the bottom of this video for the assembly you can check it out and i want you to copy it and bring assemblies into the community wherever you are Yo, thanks for watching. This is my first YouTube video. I'm giving it a try to do essays and stories and get the videos out there. Thankfully, I've got some wonderful supporters online on my blog who have helped me buy some of this equipment to get it sounding nice. Um, If you can, um, please do support me. My link is robinboardman.com and you can check out my writings. You can help me get some better equipment, get on social media, and try and get a more active voice behind student campaigning and what's happening in the climate crisis and in Palestine. Thank you.